session. Um, Martin, you can you can dive into his question and continue to talk about CPD on the on the West Coast and see what else he's buying from us, or if we want to just go ahead and, and go through this uh, this uh, this tutorial, which is going to be great. Greg, great working with you. By the way, guys, we went through our whole uh, tutorial sessions with our internal sales staff a few weeks back, so I think we're pretty well versed, and so are my store guys. So, with that being said, Martin, Greg, I'll leave it over to you guys. Let's get to work. Awesome. Thanks, Gary. Everybody should see me now. We should be rocking and rolling. So thanks for joining us this morning, afternoon, depending on where you're at. Uh, Greg Lee, Martin Valdez, your senior product trainers with LG Home Entertainment specifically. We are excited to have everybody with us here. A uh, lot to cover. Uh, we're going to do it quickly. This is more of a quick run through to give you some some details, but just sort of an overview of the line and some of the really cool things we're doing in 2023. First thing that we want to alert you to, if you're not familiar, LG's reachlg.com. This is a great resource for everybody. This, if you are into custom installation integration, uh, we have a specific portal that you will want to go and register for on ReachLG. So when you sign in, you don't sign in for regular, you sign up for the CI portal. You'll then choose uh, Snap One is a, you know, your where you're getting product from. And essentially you'll have access to, of course, training, but even more importantly, CI relative materials, how to get into our public display mode, how to set up our ultra short throw projector quickly and efficiently. You'll have access to mechanicals, CADs, elevations, and you'll have those early. So when we're switching over from 20 three to 24 model series product, we'll have those CADs and elevations way before we see the first product. So if you're trying to figure out if something's changed or the size needs to be exact because of a fit with a client, boom, you can go and get it there way before the product. So this definitely a great resource. You'll have spec sheets way before the product ships. We have sell sheets, things you can bundle up in PDFs and send out to a client as a part of a bid ahead of time to help sell the product in. So again, Reach LG, a great resource. If you haven't signed up, definitely do it. And when you do, make sure you sign up for the CI portal so you have access to all of the great accoutrements that you need to be able to do the best with your business. So become that LG superhero. Yeah, a lot of those questions can be answered there. Today, we're going to run through our OLED lineup, which is probably the most important. We also have a new OLED centric soundbar that makes a lot of sense. If you know, we're not looking for the living room, we're looking for bedrooms, secondary rooms, or whatnot. We'll talk a little bit about IP control, our public display mode, how to access it, and some of the options and features that we have built in there to make things easier on you, depending on your client. And we'll talk about our QNEDs and projectors, QNED TVs being our step below OLED. And of course, projectors, if you need something over 100 inches, we have got it all. Now, for 2023, LG is celebrating a major milestone, that being the fact that we have been selling OLED for a decade. Uh, just doesn't seem like we have been doing it for that long. But yes, we are a decade into OLED. And that's exciting because we are still the number one selling brand of OLED. I think the most recent numbers just came out. And I believe, and throw a rock at me if I'm wrong, LG is like 55% of the OLED business, even with more and more companies getting into it. And if we look back over this decade, we started with that not even 4K, but 1080p OLED that was curved. And then we brought out a 4K and then we brought it out with HDR. And then we started providing really cool paper slim or even wallpaper thin designs of these. We then brought out a processor for OLED then the world's first, and I still think only 8K OLEDs available in the marketplace. We have the first and only ever rollable television that was brought to market, the OLED R. And now we're starting to see that evolution that we're getting the second and third generation OLED product using better materials, longer lasting, better performing. And we're starting to see the expansion in terms of model series. We've got you know, regular OLEDs, we have gaming OLEDs, we have editing OLEDs, we have lifestyle OLEDs, and it continues to grow. And so where we started off at a 55, we're now not just doing 55, but you can get TVs in the range from 
42 all the way up to 97. We just saw new information that we have more smaller OLED sizes coming as well for monitors, TV, so on and so forth. So OLED is definitely a growth category. And some of the big reviewers out there have been promoting that we've now are starting to move out of the LCD LED era into the era of OLED, which we're in the best position to take advantage of that. And here is one place you can see that. If we take a look at the lineup, we typically had A to Z, but for the US market, that A series product is going away. It was a 60 Hertz OLED, great for movies, but American market wants better performance. So we now start with the B series. That's our baseline 120 Hertz OLED. But for CI, think of it this way. CI starts with C, which is our premium product, premium features, premium processing, premium design. It is really where we think it starts. And even more so our G, which is our most prestigious 4K model. And we've got, of course, our 8K and a new series that we're going to highlight here as part of the call. Now, as I said, CI really starts with essentially our best-selling, in fact, I believe it's the best-selling OLED series in the market and our most popular uh, because of it. Wide series range of sizes, everything from 42 all the way up to 83. And where it sort of sets itself apart is it's not just OLED, but what LG classifies as OLED Evo, meaning that it is a step up of, in terms of performance overall compared to our B-series baseline OLED. Now, OLED Evo uses our best panels and our best level processor, which working together have specialized algorithms that can extract more performance out of the panel, which one of those key things is that we'll see better brightness output on a C-series over the B. So up to 20% brighter in those size ranges. Uh, so from 55 all the way, I'm sorry, 40, 55 up to 83. The 42 and 48 don't will be brighter. <laughs> the only problem is that they're smaller pixels, so they don't see the full 20% brightness increase, but it is a brighter set. But in those key sizes, 55 through you know 83, definitely brighter. Now that processor, the Alpha 9, you know, AI processor Gen 6 is a processor that we developed and designed specifically to take advantage of what we know about OLED. Now, LG builds you know, all of our own OLED panels and for a lot of other companies as well, but this processor was developed in tandem with the actual panels to extract the best performance. And we're getting to the point that sometimes you look at this thing and it doesn't look like a picture, it looks real. You get the appearance or feeling that you're looking into a three-dimensional image. And that's, of course, the greatness of OLED, number one, but the processor being able to extract every bit of detail and depth out of the image. And for this year, the Alpha 9 Gen 6 processor has added some new algorithms and capabilities. Number one, the upscaling has been improved yet again. Uh, we seem to make improvements, but this seems to be a bigger jump than in years past. We also can recognize different scenes and apply processing algorithms for that. If you've got HDR, you're trying to bring out a subject to make it look more three-dimensional, we have those sort of algorithms. Now, we could talk just an hour on processing, but essentially, if you can get us a decent quality signal to the OLED, we will give you something that will make you think you're looking at native 4K. And the reason we say this is we do a demonstration live in front of dealers and the public where we run two TVs side by side. It's the same content. And we get their feedback. Which one do you like better? Is there a major difference or do these look you know, really good? And everybody says they look really good. But I think this one has a little bit more brightness. I like the colors on this, a little bit more shadow detail. They never mention resolution. And it's at that point we show them that one TV was running 4K native but the one that you, you're actually choosing was running 720p native and they didn't realize it wasn't 4K. That is how good our processing has gotten to in the set. So if you get us an HD signal, people are thinking they're watching 4K all day long, which is great. And with 4K, we now have the availability of HDR. And HDR as a signal is great because it's supposed to have more brightness, more contrast, more detail. I see more steps. I have better shadow detail. But 
for a time, people have complained that HDR, I actually don't like HDR as much as I like old SDR. And there's a reason behind that. With HDR, sometimes the signal is designed to have more brightness than the TV can produce. So if I've got over a thousand nits of you know brightness in the signal, and I'm putting it on a typical TV, I then have to squeeze the signal down to make sure that brightest pixel or the brightest pixels don't just get blown out and those around it. So I have to bring the brightness down. Well, the problem is, is that anything that was dark gets pushed down as well. So a lot of times dark HDR content can just look overly dark on a TV. It just doesn't have the pop it should. And that's because of the tone mapping that has to be done. Now with LG, we've been doing a lot with tone mapping and HDR. And this is like our third generation uh, upgrade where we're using what we call OLED Dynamic Tone Mapping Pro. And instead of looking at the scene as you know one entity, it breaks every frame down into 20,000 blocks and then analyzes each block for the high and the low pixel and then blends the dynamic range of all of those to match up to the TV. The key thing is, is that bright scenes will look great, but dark scenes will still have that pop to make HDR content always look like HDR, regardless of whether it's a bright or a dark scene. So if we look at the process, it looks at all the pixels, it maps each one individually, blends it all together, 20,000 blocks. This makes for an amazing HDR image, whether it started dark or bright. And in real world, here is a scene from a movie that when you can see when the tone mapping is off, it looks very dark. It's kind of murky. It's just a way that typical TVs would tone map HDR. But with dynamic tone mapping, we can see how we bring out that HDR pop, even in dark scenes like this. And this can be switched on and off and watching the HDR content. And you can see the effect that it has on literally every frame. Uh, in which it's applied. So if you want your HDR to always look dynamic, you definitely want an LG OLED with Dynamic Tone Mapping Pro. Gaming continues to be a big deal with a lot of customers and it continues to grow. Uh, if you take movies and music, all the revenue they generate in a year, combine them and multiply them by five, gaming still generates more revenue than they do, uh, even multiplied out like that. So if we look at what we need to get the most out of a game console or game, you know, gaming PC, notice the PSS, PS5, Xbox Series X, and gaming PCs have certain features that they can take advantage of to provide a smoother, you know, jitter-free, tear-free uh, image, or take advantage of advanced technologies like Dolby Vision gaming at 4K and 120 hertz if the TV supports it. Dolby Atmos for gaming. NVIDIA G-Sync for PC gaming. And if we look at gaming PCs have the highest requirement in terms of what they need, but notice LG OLEDs have all the key features to give you the best gaming experience. And even our Q&ED TVs, either the 85 or the 80, have most of the major features that you would need. But with OLED's you know, perfect black, self-lit pixels, and instantaneous response, it provides the best gaming experience of any of the technologies out there. And on our C3, our G3, and our higher level OLEDs, you get four HDMI 2.1 inputs that support full 48 gigabit per second, meaning I can run 4K at 120 hertz with Dolby Vision on three inputs and still have the ER open to get sound from the TV, from gaming back to my sound solution, whether that's a sound bar or you know, a Dolby Atmos receiver. And on top of this, we have our game dashboard. So you can pull up and see gaming specs at a quick glance here. We're doing 120 frames per second with G-Sync. You can change some of these indicators. I can, instead of the black stabilizer, I can make this the resolution to see if I was gaming at 1080 or 4K. And then if I want to make quick adjustments to the picture, sound, or the gaming features in the TV, you click on the game optimizer. This new tab opens up with, well, it's three different tabs, one for gaming, one for picture, one for sound. It is see-through, so I can still be gaming, making adjustments, and then get back into the game without having to spend seven button pushes just to get to a picture setting. 
in the menu, making it much more convenient for gamers. So if the customer is into gaming, and by the way, the game dashboard and the game optimizer are on all of our 2023 series TVs, not just the OLEDs. <clears throat> so if somebody's in the gaming, LG is probably the right solution. And to take advantage of AI in the processor, <clears throat> We know that customers, when they look at TVs in a store, go, wow, I like the way it looked. But when it gets home, it may go to APS mode. It, they may not have the energy savings turned off, which we recommend on both. Turn off APS and turn off energy saving. Go to a different mode to get the pop they saw in the store. But if they want to do something a little bit more tuned to them, instead of having to learn what brightness, color, contrast, gamut, uh, color gamut, uh, what's another one, Gamma, uh, do, they can just go into the personalized picture wizard from the picture menu and it essentially uses the power of AI to simplify the process. So it'll provide them with six pages of images and they choose one or two images from each page that is the most impactful or captures their eye the most. So they walk through the process and at the end of the process, it will basically calculate based on their selections, a personalized picture setting that is literally one in like 85 million cases based on what they input. And here's what's cool about this. When we've put the remote in a customer's hand and had them walk through the process, when it was all said and done, they look at the picture and they go, wow, that looks good, which does a much better job than asking them to go dig through a menu and try and adjust things they don't know what they do to try and make the picture look better. Really simplifies the process. Using the power of AI, the personal picture wizard setting makes it easier for a customer to get a picture that will match up with the what they want to see their TV look like. So don't forget it. And last but not least, there's another key feature that we've incorporated into our sets known as Always Ready. Now, we have a competitor that builds a TV that its main purpose is to look like artwork when you're not watching, watching TV. Now with LG OLEDs, their main purpose is to make anything you look at look amazing. So whether it's video, gaming, sports, news, it's gonna have an incredible image. And when you're not watching it on the C3 and higher, we have Always Ready, which becomes when you turn it off, you can set it when you turn off the TV to activate, or you can even talk through the magic remote or through the hands-free voice control and tell it, get it to start, always ready, and it will kick in. And it has art galleries that you can display when you're not watching TV. There's video art galleries you can display. You can play back music. You can have a clock display that will update you on things during the day. Or the one that's most popular is, of course, the ability for customers to put their own photos on display, whether that's artwork, photography, family photos, you know, kids at sports or activities, you know, birthdays, vacations. Now your memories are enhancing your living space when you're not watching TV. So this is on the C3 and above. And you can literally put all your images on a USB drive, load it in the side, and then basically tell the TV, when you go to this function, play the images on this drive. Now, the only precursor is you have to have 16 images or more, because it is an OLED, it is going to rotate. We are not going to leave a static image up there for hours at a time. But that's it. You could have hundreds of images, thousands of images on that USB drive, and it will cycle through them all. And there are some setups you can do in terms of, uh, there's a motion sensor on like our G series, it'll track when people are in the room and such. So lots of things you can do with this, but now you got a TV that doesn't just look good for artwork, it looks good for everything, including the video and the sports and the gaming that your customers are involved with. All right. So C3 versus our B series, our baseline, up to 20% brighter on the 55 and larger screen sizes better processing, better HDR, better bringing details out of the image, making things look brighter, making the object stand out, and cool features like Always Ready, which turns your you know, TV into artwork or video you know, playback when you're not watching set, uh, the TV. 
to enhance your living space. Lightweight construction, that 77 inch weighs in at 51.8 pounds. So it's about the weight of a typical 50 to 55 inch LED, but I can put a 77 inch screen. If you're trying to get a large screen on maybe a real long extended swing arm, LG C3 is probably gonna be your best choice because they are super crazy light. We use a composite fiber material to make that happen. Bezel is very slim. Uh, it's almost invisible. And then four high-speed HDMI ports and then hands-free voice control as well. C has always been our most popular and continues to be the best-selling OLED series out there. And don't just take our word for it. David Katzmeyer over at CNET said, hey, you know, the C3 sets the standard for high-end TV picture quality and you can pay more for a nice TV, but you probably shouldn't. I like that he said it's got better picture quality than any non-OLED TV they've tested. So a pretty strong, you know, validation of what our engineers have done with the C-Series. And to build out that C package, if a customer wants better audio, we have a new sound bar that is designed to, as you can see here, mate up with the back of the C OLEDs, 55 through 77, to hold the sound bar below the set. This bracket comes in the box with the sound bar C sound bar, or it has an extra kick plate that you can add to the back of it that the TV and the sound bar, essentially the sound bar now becomes the stand for the television is a matched package. Now, this soundbar also adds some new features, which we're going to retroactively add to some of the 2022 bars that are carrying over. So Wow Orchestra is a feature that plays not only the soundbar, the TV speakers, all as one sound package, giving a more, uh, a larger sound stage. Wow Interface, customers like simple, right? They want a simple single remote. They don't want multiple remotes. Well, once you pair up an LG 2022 2023 soundbar up to one of our 2023 TVs. I can, of course, do volume up and down. I can mute it, but I can also go in and change the sound profile in the TV, and it affects the sound profile in the TV or the soundbar or both. So essentially, I can make adjustments and not have to have that soundbar remote to confuse things for the customer. One remote to rule them all, LG's magic remote and the WOW interface to make it simple for your customer. And then the soundbar C, as we call it, since it mounts up, you know, mates up with the C-series OLEDs, and you can use it with our other TVs as well. Voice is probably one of the biggest issues that customers complain about. Can't hear the dialogue or don't understand it. So on the soundbar C, you get three front firing speakers, one center channel, and then three up firing. And one of the up firings, that center, is actually another dialogue speaker. So you get double the output of dialogue from the two center speakers. And with one firing up, it helps to lift audio or dialogue. So it sounds like it's coming more from the TV instead of below and giving more of the illusion that you've got you know, sound coming from the TV. Now, if we look at the bar, it's loaded, supports Dolby Atmos, DTSX with those up firing speakers. It's IMAX enhanced for audio, supports high res, uh, up to 24 bit, 96 kilohertz. And then in terms of those features, we talk about, you know, the WOW Orchestra where all the speakers from the TV and the soundbar are matched up together. We have variable refresh rate up to 120 hertz support when you run through the HDMI input and onto the TV. And of course, if I e-arc out of the television, whatever the signal quality is coming into the TV, we will give you that same level of quality back to the sound bar. One thing I didn't note on the TVs, the we now have DTS support where it's supposed to pass through the TV. So if it comes from a Blu-ray player or Disney is supposed to be streaming in DTS here soon for IMAX enhanced, it'll pass through the TV. Now we're not saying we're DTS compatible, but every DTS signal I've run into our TV thus far it will play from the TV. So it's not confusing for customers that their Blu-ray player is connected, but now they're not getting sound on certain disc. We fixed that issue. So thank you, engineers. This is a Wi-Fi soundbar, and you can see the stand here on the right where it mounts. If you're going to hold the soundbar underneath the TV when it's mounted on the wall, 
and then the additional kick plate that you add to it if you want to use the soundbar as the stand for that 55, 65, or 77-inch OLED C-Series TV. However, for CEI, the product I think is the best match in terms of display is G. G is really our golden series of OLED, where look at this thing. When you mount even the 83, you know, or we do have the 97 G2 carryover from last year, it fits very thin to the wall. It doesn't protrude. It comes with the mount that you need and really has that high-end you know, aesthetic that a lot of customers, especially in high-end installs, are looking for from their TV. And we even have a soundbar, the G10, that will match up flat if you're trying to add a simple sound solution. Now, major benefit is our one wall design. The bracket that you need to mount it comes in the box and it countersinks into the back of the unit. So you can press the back of this TV as flat to the wall as the wall will allow. Uh, if it's not plumb or it's not perfectly flat, it may be off side, but that's not the TV's fault. You need better sheet rockers if that's, <laughs> that's what's going on. But this has an aesthetic and a look that interior designers really like because it doesn't protrude into the room. It is very flat up against the wall. And that bracket that you need, that mount does come in the box. And it's essentially the same, well, it is the same from the 55 all the way up through the 83 inch screen sizes and the bracket from 2022 and 2023 G3s are cross compatible if you happen to lose one or need an extra one. Now, because we have put all the electronics in the television, you don't need a separate, you know, connect type box to uh, run all your electronics into. So the way that we've set this up is that on the 55 and 65, you'll see bottom center is a place to put a back box for your power, number one. And number two, if you want to run any cabling, HDMI's or whatnot. And we've done a pretty good job at providing provisions for that cabling. You have cable latches that you can lock the cables as they come through. So they hold in place when you go to push the wall back. They don't creep out where it's not allowing you to go flat. So thank the we thank the engineers for that. 55 and 65, that back box needs to be lower center of the TV to allow for that. On the 77 and 83, the cable channels are on the right side of the TV when the TV is laying flat. And then, of course, when you hang it on the wall, it'll be on the left side of the TV. So lower left over there um, when you're looking at the set. Now, if you can see here at the very top, you can see the cutout for the mount is countersunk into the TV. So that's what allows us to get that thing as flat to the wall as the wall will allow. We do have installed video on you know getting it completely connected up on reachlg.com. So don't forget that is another good resource. But the thing that most people are talking about is this addition of a new light control architecture on our G series OLED. What this is, it's a layer of micro lenses. And on a 77 inch set, yes, Per pixel, there are 5,117 micro lenses for every pixel, meaning that the total count on a 77-inch OLED is over 42 billion micro lenses. And the reason we have those is that when light is being generated in the cell, a lot of it tends to bounce around and never make it out of the cell. Whereas with the micro lenses added to the cell, it's able to more effectively grab light and push it out, meaning that we're getting better light output with no extra power input, making it much more efficient. So with the 55 through 77, comparing back to our baseline B series, we're not just 20 or 30% brighter, which was our max last year, we're up to 70% brighter. So uh, with the use of the new Brightness Booster Max, algorithm because we do have heat dissipation technology so we can drive this set harder as well we can get much brighter peak brightness numbers out of this set uh, in non-calibrated modes we're looking at over 2000 nits is what's been reported outside of lg 
And even calibrated, we're looking at just around 1,500 or thereabouts of peak nits. So this thing's a monster for light output, but with that perfect black, you know, amazing DCI P3 color for 4K and HDR, it is a phenomenal set. Now, again, that 70% of brightness applies 55 through 77. The 83 has not received micro lens array or the light control architecture. So it's 30% brighter. So still brighter than our C series when compared to the B baseline. And when people have seen this, we had to come up with a new accessory kit for the G3. Yes, you feel like you want to have some OLED tanning lotion on and maybe a pair of sunglasses sometimes when you watch it. Of course, just kidding. But not only do we get better brightness out of it, but the G3 has a new super anti-reflective technology on the front of it. So compared to the C in the same lighting conditions, you can see that it's much better at suppressing bright highlights. So if you have windows, you have lights behind the seating area, it's going to do a much better job of suppressing those. And with that extra brightness, it's just sort of, you know, double the good <laughs> that we get out of this. So this is brand new for this year. And again, applies 55 to 77. 83 is still uh, more similar to last year. And last and certainly not least, since the inception of LG OLED, when we brought that product out in 2013 and our competition didn't have a solution to go up against us, what did we hear? Well, you don't want an OLED. Why? Well, you could probably answer it. The biggest concern that most customers still have today is image retention and even worse, burn-in. Now, our engineers have worked very hard. We're on our third generation panels. We're now using materials that are much more stable, long lasting, you know, lose brightness slower. We don't really have too many concerns about it. In fact, on our premium G and higher series, you will have a five-year limited panel warranty, which means that we'll cover parts and labor for replacement panel for year one, and then years two through five, if there's any issue, we'll provide the panel, which is the more expensive side of things. Customer just has to pay to put it in. Now, somebody has asked, well, if you really wanted to make a statement, now what, why not five years parts and labor? We, there are dealers out there that want to sell extended warranties, and it's kind of hard to sell one if we cover everything. So it is limited uh, to allow for that. And as we talked about, you know, image retention is really the biggest concern. But I don't know if you know, know this, but the website ratings, rtings.com, has been doing a longevity, you know, study on 100 televisions. They're running them up to 18 hours a day. So they're simulating th uh, the life of the TV three times faster. And when they got to the point where they had simulated essentially a year, they went back to test them because guess what they're running as a video source? Not a movie, not a regular channel. Yeah, they're using CNN with that white Chiron across the bottom, that white logo box with the red CNN logo. What do you think might have happened to some of the OLEDs out there? Well, and it's come to the LG OLEDs when they'd simulated a full year of testing of running nothing but CNN, the LG OLEDs, in their words, were clean or free from image retention and certainly no indication of burn-in on any of these sets. However, our competitors were already showing image retention. And in the case of the newest technology, the QD OLEDs were showing severe image retention, if not already burn in on the sets. Now, I'm not trying to beat up the competition, and this is based on third-party outboard testing, but if the customer was concerned about image retention or burn in on OLED, LG and our engineers with that 10 years of experience that we have certainly have figured out the best way to protect our sets from seeing the indication of that. Uh, now, if the customer is only gonna run CNN forever, on their TV, I would suggest maybe not getting anybody's OLED. However, under normal use, we know that the LGs are going to perform the best because what we're seeing in third-party testing indicates this. So yay us. Now, the G3 versus the C3, it is really our golden child. It is our G premium set. You get better brightness on the 55 to 77 inch, up to 70% brighter. 30% on the 83, better light control, 
micro lens array, brightness booster max, super anti-reflective. You get the, of course, one wall, zero gap. And of course, there's no external boxes. You don't have to deal with a connection type box with that display and then still have to run the wiring and the power and have to worry about all that kind of fun stuff. Five-year panel warranty, which is unique out there and wall mounts included. It is an ATSC 3.0 TV and supports Wi-Fi 6. Now, if a customer wants it, we do have a table stand available optionally. Sometimes it's hard to find the G3 or the G2 stand, but the good thing is, is that if you're doing a 55, 65, 77, 83, if you just have the right size, the stands from G2 to G3 are cross compatible. So that should make it easy on you. And last things to consider on the G3, it is our most premium 4K OLED. So you're going to get most premium performance and you're going to get the most premium design, which definitely works well with just about any interior out there. It's an installed product because it has the mount in the box. So, you know, you're going to get the labor from that. It also has no connect boxes to deal with. Thank you very much. It's not a velocity. Remember, our C3 is our most popular, the G3, because it is more expensive, but you're getting better design, better performance, tends to hold pricing more consistently throughout the year. We don't see, you know, the uh, price drops for promotional periods with the G3 because we consider it more of a premium high-end product. So you'll see the natural change in price as it ages naturally over the course of the year, but you're not going to see those promotional price drops, which means that if you're trying to plan something out three, six months down the line, your customer is not going to go, oh, I just saw my TV one on sale at XYZ. Am I going to get the new better price? You're probably not going to have that. So that's another benefit. And it makes it easier for you to plan things out down the road. And with sizes from 55 to 83, and if we count the 97 inch G2 as part of that family, we really should, you've got plenty of size options uh, out there in terms of OLED. All right. So B is our baseline. C, our most popular because it's got the thinner bezel, it's got the better processor, it's brighter, better tone mapping better everything for HDMI, high-speed inputs for gaming or whatever you might want to do, voice control, always ready. This is why it's the most popular. But for CI, we feel like the premium high-end is really belongs to the G3 with that one wall design, that incredible brightness, better Wi-Fi, ATSC, the five-year warranty. It's the one to go with. And we still have 8K OLEDs in our lineup. Uh, Hopefully, if you're coming out to Cedia, drop by the booth and we'll show you the latest and greatest and everything we have in OLED. But wait, there is more. We've just officially announced and we'll be showing this at Cedia, speaking of which, and introducing, I believe, delivering the fourth quarter of this year, the world's first 4K 120 hertz wireless transmission OLED TV, LG's OLED Evo m3 so take everything that we just talked about with the g3 with the mount and everything and the warranty and the you know performance but now if i want to put the tv here all i have to do is run power to it because everything else connects to the zero connect box which from zero connect to the tv there is zero wired connection because it is completely wireless so we get all the great features that we talked about on the G3, the processor, the brightness booster, the one wall design. And with this extra box, we have three HDMI inputs, two USBs, we have an RS-232, we have an IR blaster, we have a LAN connection, we have optical out, of course, eARC out as well. And it transmits its signal wirelessly. Uh, it's 60 gigahertz from the box, to the receiver, which is at the bottom of the bottom center of the TV. We're actually doing a M3 total training next Thursday. So be on the lookout for that invitation. We'll cover it a lot more in depth. And, and of course, if you see us at Cedia and as we get closer to it, there'll have be more details available, but just wanna to touch on it now. This is definitely coming 77, 83 and the 97 has the full 2023 feature pack uh, that the 97G2 doesn't. So there's actually a reason to step up to M3. So overall, LG consumer OLEDs have been very well respected out there. We've been doing this for a decade, but here recently in the past few years, Hollywood recognized LG OLED with an award. In fact, it was a technology and engineering Emmy award 
where they gave us that Emmy as the Hollywood reference display. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that when they're doing post-production, usually the editor colorist is working on a 30, 32 inch reference monitor, but your director, your cinematographer, your producer, they're sitting back and nobody's going to crowd. They're not going to crowd around that 30 inch. They need something that's more in line with what's going to match up with the theater in somebody's home. Well, more than all other consumer TVs combined, LG OLEDs are the ones utilized for that purpose in Hollywood because we can give them very accurate image capability to the point of this is this works for this application more than any other company out there. And we'll talk about that here real quick. See, we've been working with Portrait Display for a number of years, and we have a calibration solution which allows our TVs to calibrate very, 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 very closely to those reference monitors. And now with over a thousand nits, maybe right at. But you need, of course, the Calman software. You'll need a test pattern generator, maybe, and you'll need the software and a, you know, the computer to run it and then a colorimeter to read it off the screen. Well, here's what's interesting. LG and Calman now have a Calman for home, which if you get the color emitter for about $249 and the software for $145, you've got about a $400 investment in calibration. Now, if you look at our calibration versus the competition, now you'll see why Hollywood prefers LG, where our competition can give you maybe 20 grayscale calibration points. We give you 1,024. That's every bit calibrated for 10 bit where they give you six to maybe 12 color points, we give you the precision of on the Alpha 9 and the OLEDs, 35,937 color points in a 3D cube. And when we write the calibration, it doesn't go to software, it literally becomes the de facto reference point that's written to the chipset in the TV as the reference point to start from. We can do HDR tone map calibration, and all of this is done automatically. You set up the parameters for calibration, you punch the button, you walk away 10, 15 minutes, you come back, you've got a calibrated TV. And you can calibrate for SDR, HDR 10, and Dolby Vision. So if you invested about 400 bucks for the software, you could then offer up calibration services, charge maybe $50 a uh, Source, which would be SDR, HDR, Dolby Vision, maybe $150. After about three calibrations, you'd make your money back and everything after that would be profit. Plus, you're offering another level of service uh, on your LG TVs. And every TV you sell, you have the potential of making $150 or whatever you decide to set as a profit potential and to establish yourself as a more high-end sort of dealer. Uh, to do that on our Competitors, in most cases, actually all the cases up to 2022, you have to have that pattern generator, which is a $1,500 cost. We know that Sony has a change. I don't think you'll need the test pattern, but they still can't do the 3D lookup table, 35,937 color and 1,024 bit, I'm sorry, uh, grayscale calibration from what we hear so far. Still getting details, it's brand new for them, uh, but wow, way to make profit on every TV you sell. That's LG OLED. Now, what if OLED is too, too expensive for the size TV the customer is looking for? LG's Q&ED has the color capability to match up very closely to our OLEDs. Whereas if you're watching 4K and HDR content from Hollywood, from digital cinema, you know, Netflix, uh, Prime, Max, Disney, and you want that same cinematic color experience, OLED's going to be your best. Second best is LG's QNED because we use a combination of quantum dots, like some others, you know, TVs out there, but we also have a unique nano cell material, which helps to enhance our color capability even further. So with blue LEDs or mini LEDs, depending on the level of set, quantum dots and nano cells, we're getting up to and above 95% coverage of that DCI color spec that Hollywood uses to create the content that you're watching on all the streaming services or disc or wherever you're sourcing it from. This means that LG's QNED is just a step, slight step back from the OLEDs. And like I said, we're not only offering, you know, 
regular backlight systems or local dimming, we have mini LED with our precision, very small zone dimming to get its performance very close to our OLEDs. But in the larger screen sizes where OLEDs take a big jump in price, check this out. Our 75 to 86 inch QNED 85, which is mini LED, very bright, lots of zones. And when we've done demonstrations live for dealer next to our OLEDs, they go, wow, I, I didn't realize that was not an OLED at first. And now I know what TV that is. I'm really blown away by how good it looks, especially at the price points that it's at. So whereas the 77 C3 is going to be about $3,200 and get up, go up to much higher than that, you can get the 75 QNED for 1800 you know, a full cool $1,300 less. Or I could actually go to the 86 inch QNED still for less money than the 77 C3. So if you're thinking OLED is where we start with customers and we have to because it's going into you know game room or a secondary room, maybe they don't want the OLED and spend the money in there. Our QNED is a great fallback, and everybody who's ordered these in, especially the QNED 85, has been very surprised and very happy. So all good stuff. Now the QNED 75 is our entry level, getting the better, more cinematic colors that you need for 4K and HDR that Hollywood uses. It is a 60 hertz set, so the reason to step up to the 80 series is 120 hertz and it's local dimming, LED local dimming. And we actually even go to precision better dimming on the 86 inch screen size, probably one of my favorite values out there. But you're getting better gaming features, 120 hertz, better for sports and better visual performance. We've seen these side by side. 80 does stand out, but the best is our QNED 85, which is mini LED, the most zones, the most OLED like that's not an OLED in our lineup and a great value for customer who wants a really large screen with great performance, but isn't quite willing to go all the way up to the OLED level. And we still have our 8K versions of QNED in the lineup as well. Martin, any questions that I need to handle? Negative, sir. Got them all handled. You're uh, you're being extremely uh, informative, so I think they're <laughs> settling in. Uh, Martin, the man, the myth, the legend behind the scenes, taking care of the, the questions. Thank you, my brother. All it. right. So quick question. Let Martin know in the Q&A area if any IP control system or control system you like to utilize, we don't have represented here. And I believe Xtron should be here, but I don't have their logo here yet. So I do apologize. But Control4, Crestron, uh, Savant, Alon, Josh, RTI, URC, all LG TVs 2022 and higher uh, or later have... IP control. So if it's 4K resolution, even our baseline has IP control available. And any set that has our Alpha 7 or Alpha 9 will also have an RS-232 port if you prefer to hardwire into the set. All good stuff. But let's talk about our public display mode. If you're going to control these TVs, also known as hotel or hospitality mode by other manufacturers. We call it public display. This is where you want to get into some of the advanced features if it's going to be in something that a, other than a home sort of setup. And to get into this, and you can get these instructions from reachlg.com as well, from the CI portal. We don't offer it to everybody, but press the settings button on the remote, hold that settings button until the menu comes up, and then the menu will disappear. Give it a couple of seconds, and then either a channel or an input banner will pop up. When that happens, you have about five seconds to punch in 1105 on the remote, hit OK, and it will launch to this screen where public display mode is available. So it is a hidden menu. Once in there, if you want to use it in public display mode, you'll have to throw the switch on. I will let you know that if you had always ready working on a customer set, when you throw public display, they consider this more of a business scenario for installation, it will deactivate always ready. So just be aware, <laughs> we've run at that at shows and such. But here I have the power on status. It's how the TV reacts to a master power at the plug. So I can have it, you know, power on, go to standby, or whatever the last power situation the TV was in, when power was disconnected, it will return to. So if it was off, when you lost power, when it comes back on, it will stay off. If it was on, when you lose, go to the master switch and come back, it will go back to power on. You have volume management. 
you can you know turn that on and have a start volume uh, and then set the volume range. So, you know, maybe in a doctor's office, you only want the volume to go between 20 and 30. You don't want it completely off, but you don't want it too loud. We can set the range. Also key management, how the TV responds to button pushes either on the body or via the remote. You can leave it normal. I can make it just power only, or I can turn off all control uh, input on the sets other than holding the setting to you have know, the set for, was it five seconds and make it go through. But yeah, normal key operation goes away. And we get questioned all the time. We know how you like to install these things. We just want to take your LG Smart TV and make it dumb. Well, that is limited mode. And under the limited mode, you can deactivate the setup menu, channel changes, menu display, even OSD. So any messages about firmware updates or new terms and conditions or any of that stuff, it goes away. About the only thing I would leave up would be the system provider mode. You activate that, and this will allow you access to audio and video settings on the TV. But otherwise, it turns on to an HDMI input, behaves itself, doesn't do anything else, and then turns off when you turn it off. That is limited mode. You're welcome. Hey, Greg. <laughs> hey, Greg, before you quit, before you go on, uh, this one got me. Uh, five-year five year warranty. I want to say no, but does does it apply to commercial as well? Do you know? To commercial, um, our warranty is consumer warranty. Yeah, so we saying. aren't saying, you know, it, it comes down to uh, the difference between the way the consumer TVs are built and the way the uh, commercial TVs are built. If it's a consumer TV, you're probably going to have to have a servicer, you know, take it to a servicer to get it serviced under warranty. Uh, if they find that it's in a commercial setting, they may not do it, but then there's a cost factor difference that the, uh, you know, commercial panels have a different level warranty, but they're typically more expensive. So we okay. offer the option and the flexibility to be able to do these things, but, you know, warranties, you definitely want to look at the, what the warranty coincides, but yeah, if you have an issue with one, you're probably gonna have to pull it off the wall, take it to the service or have them look at it and then take it back. That would be your biggest difference. Make sense? Thank All right. Sir. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, power on defaults. If you wanted to go to a specific input, this is where you, no matter what happens, it will always go back to the default. And then you can set the aux source settings, which is, do you want the other inputs? Maybe I do it to HDMI 1, but I want 2, 3, and 4 to be available as well. Or you can keep them locked down where it only ever goes to HDMI 1, ever, no if, ands, or buts. That's all you can do. You can uh, pull the AV settings where they're still usable. And of course, the aspect ratio, I can lock that down. So if a museum is showing old four by three content and they want to keep it four by three, you can lock the aspect ratio at four by three. But the thing that dealers get most excited about, if I'm doing a install where I have 20 TVs that I'm setting up in an office or a restaurant or something of that nature, invariably you're going to go into the public display or the hotel, the hospitality mode and make one mistake. And it's going to throw a monkey wrench in your install that you'll have to track down. Fortunately with USB cloning, once you get one TV set up properly, I can then export those settings to USB and then import them on every other TV. So they're consistent throughout the line. If I need to ad address each TV individually, I need to address TV one, two, three, four. You can set the ID so they are recognizable and controllable through IP. And speaking of IP, even though it's in the IP control setup as part of the menu, you can see here, IP control setup is available from the main menu on 2023 LG TVs forward. So I just go in under the menu, go under general, and then pull up IP control. And then you can set it up right there. We figured it's something you can leave in the top layer menu and not have any issues with. Last, we got five minutes, so we're making good time. Hopefully, you've got some good information so far. We do want to touch on projectors, give you some contact information and get you out of here. So we're looking pretty good. Projectors. LG has been doing projectors for a long time. As long as I've been here, they've only been solid state, meaning LED, laser, or a combination of the two. We brought one of the first ultra short throws to market. 
the HU-85 and the 915 and its sibling, the 915QE, are based on the same chassis, which means that if you can get two inches from the back of the unit to the screen, this ultra short throw projector is ultra, ultra short throw. It'll throw a 90 inch image. And with only 7.2 inches of space between the back of the projector and the front of the screen, we can throw 120 inches diagonal. And it's not that we can throw it at such a short angle. We are using a three channel laser. Uh, it's a refined red, green, I'm sorry, a red and blue and a second blue that goes through a yellow refiner to help us get better brightness. This ultra short throw, which is geared more to home theater and CI, the 915QB for the black or the dark chassis, 3000 ANSI lumens. And when tested, it measures right about that, if not higher uh, to start with. And whereas most projectors uh, that are ultra short throw are using the smaller 0.47 uh, TI digital micromirror device, we're using the larger, higher resolution 0.661, which tends to have better contrast, better resolve. It throws up an amazing looking image. So definitely brighter than last gen. And what about colors? We know how good our OLEDs are. We know how good our QNEDs are. Well, the color story continues on because we can cover 100% of DCI P3. So you're getting the full fidelity of color with 4K HDR type of sources off of any number of streaming services and of course, Blu-ray 4K discs. So great color, but what about contrast? Well, we've got plenty of brightness with 3000 lumens. If I need that, I can. we have a manual iris that you can leave open fully, but what happens if I want to show it in a dark room and, we'll, and I would need a better black floor? Well, if you can close the iris down to make you know, black, essentially blacker in that environment. So that's a manual setting, but we also have an adaptive contrast setting that in bright scenes, when it's activated, we'll leave it bright. But again, in dark scenes, it will cut the power to the illumination engine to bring dark scenes even darker uh, with the same contrast. So that deeper black gives more pop to the image. This is all done in real time. And it's better and faster than those old, you know, remember the uh, uh, automatic irises on projectors that would open and close to control light? They were a little bit slow. This thing is instantaneous. And tone mapping, which looks great on our OLEDs, even makes it over to our projectors. So our high-end, high-performance projectors do have dynamic tone mapping uh, built into the set for HLG and, I'm sorry, yeah, and HDR10 content. So I get that better depth. I don't blow out the highlights. And the 810 projector we're going to talk about in a second just got a firmware update, which made this even better. Uh, I've got one I've been playing with, and it looks amazing. But where a lot of projectors are just display devices, we have our WebOS. So you'll be able to access you know, entertainment apps directly. If you're playing Disney through it, you'll be able to extract uh, you know the audio all the way up through Dolby Atmos with the eARC connection. We have optical, we have Bluetooth. We have plenty of ways to get audio out of this thing if you need it. And with 2.2 channel front firing speakers, it actually works pretty well as just a, a TV when you don't wanna run the full system. Audio, I think sounds as good or maybe even better than a lot of our TVs in the lineup because those speakers are front firing. So if you want something that is essentially a huge screen, but operates like a smart TV with WebOS built in, definitely got a great choice here. And our remote on our projectors, <laughs> why we can't do this on the TV, I don't know, but they're all backlit on the better 4K projectors. So here we are with the 915QB. This was the one that at the shootout last year for ultra short throws was the clear winner, knocking out all of the big names. Uh, to get the top spot. Does have auto calibration, so it works with the LG uh, solution from Portrait Displays, the uh, Calman system. It is IP control capable, whereas the light colored chassis is not. But the light colored chassis gives up a little bit color, gains a few more lumens if you need it. All the other features are consistent, but we do have two versions. If you need a traditional projector, take the CI uh, 915, 
take one laser out, but our dual laser is 2,700 ANSI lumens, still almost 100% coverage of the DCI color space. Looks amazing with HDR10. I said it just got a new firmware update that we installed, and this thing went from looking good to amazing. And still IP control, still auto calibration, HDMI 2.1, another great option. And then if you need more horsepower, we've got our 5000 lumen GRU, GRU 510 series. Now, this is more of a pro beams type projector. So the WebOS doesn't have all the entertainment apps, but is useful in getting connected to the projector and running its operations. But here we can run all the way up to about a 300 inch uh, and both the dual and the uh, 5000 lumen do have lens shift on them as well for making placement easier to deal with. So here are the feature sets on that. I'm almost done. Just want to give you one more thing. SPIF registration, if you haven't done it, us.lgsalesportal.com. Get registered there. Uh, lots of really good SPIFs, especially in the CI space. And if you ever get locked out, they'll do it if you haven't been on in 90 days. Go to send an email to spiff.claim at lge.com. Just let them know what email you're registered under that, hey, you're locked out. They'll unlock you. They just do it after 90 days as a precaution. I don't know why. Last two slides. Joe Colombo, if you have any technical issues, you got a you know Panasonic Blu-ray player going through a Denon receiver that's not communicating right with an LG projector, just call Joe. Uh, his email is here, joecolombo at lge.com, and then the 1-833-288-8397, number 9 to 5 Eastern Time Zone. And the account manager for Snap One is Joe here. <laughs> Joe is, this is his phone number, of course, his email. And we also have a CI sales team, depending on whether you're on the West, Central, or Eastern side of the country. West is all the way to New Mexico, uh, yeah, New Mexico plus Texas. That's Brian Butler. His contact information's here. George has everything from above Texas all the way down to Alabama and touching over into Florida. That's George Jimenez. And then Don Horan has Georgia all the way up the Eastern seaboard to Maine. These are your contacts for them. If you have custom install questions on product, anything, they are your resource to reach out to for that. I just, this is a quick summary, but I'm not even going to go through that because I want to give you your time back. Thank you. Hopefully we answered all your questions, maybe sparked some new ones. If you would, please go to reachlg.com, get registered. If you haven't, sign up under the CI portal, not the regular one for all the good stuff. And please give us some feedback on how we went. I know this went really fast. Uh, hopefully some quick details and we kept it interesting enough to keep from boring you. Uh, hopefully we'll get to see you in person. Come visit us at CDL. Martin and I will both be there. And of course, try to get Snap to get us out into the field in front of real people at real locations and do some of these great live demos that we've been talking about here so you can see them for yourselves. I'm Greg Lee. Want to thank you for spending time with us. Thanks to Martin Valdez for supporting us. And Gary, <laughs> in the chat box, Gary, I'm going to turn it back to you at this point. Before you do, though, how do they get onto the uh, um, M3 training next Thursday is the question that's in there. I is will that get, uh, I'll send the. Was it on the uh, slide? There we'll was a slide. We'll get it from there. Okay. So it wasn't on that slide that we had in the deck. No. The link. Yeah. Okay. Then that's going out to, uh, who was that? Eric, we'll get you that as well. Thank you guys for a hey, great job. I, 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 it wasn't that quick. It was like, it was, it was in depth. Thank you so much, you guys. I mean, obviously the breadth of product is, you know, needs this kind of detail and so forth and i just really wanted to get yeah everybody familiar as familiar as we can with lg uh looking forward to see you guys um martin great job on firing off all the questions that was two sessions today um everybody i will get the recording of this and the slide deck out to you guys in the next couple of days if there's anything in the meantime you guys need us for make sure you hit me back gary.usher at snap1.com Great job, guys. I can't. I, I look forward to doing a 41 stop tour with you guys because we have 41 stores tomorrow. I'm in e or I'm not Eden Prairie. Where I'm tomorrow in Fort Myers, grand opening um, and some more grand openings coming up. But, yeah, to put together a tour where we can get in front of these panels would be fantastic. And that would be Greg. And that would be Martin. You guys on the road with me. Let's do it. All right. Yeah.
everybody, uh, look forward to check my event section for my next week's uh, webinars. Uh, every Wednesday, we do this uh, with the best, uh, obviously, vendors in the country. Greg and Martin, thank you guys so much. Great job. Great presentation. I'll be in touch, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. See you next time. Have a time. good one, my man. Take care, buddy. Yeah. <laughs>